right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM joining you as usual from a thankfully, which is odd to say, but thankfully a dry San Diego because we've been washed out the last few days. And today I am delighted to be joined from Chicago, Illinois by Kelly Thornton. How are you doing, Kelly? Great, John. Thanks for having me on your show. Absolutely. And uh, in 2016, Kelly founded T. Is it T. Candley? Is that the correct name? It's T. And, you know, we can argue probably if it's <laughs> correct in Irish or not, but we say Tige. Yeah. Tige. Okay. Tige Handley, a uh, six year old e commerce company with the mission of helping men look and feel amazing. Uh, the business has evolved from selling three distinct skincare systems to boasting a wide variety of products. Uh, and Tige shipped its 1.5 millionth box in July 2022 and has over 350,000 customers worldwide. And you are focused on enriching the experience for all customers and guiding men to healthier lifestyles founded right. on self-confidence. So this is what we're going to talk about today, Kelly, is how on earth did you scale this business uh, to eight figures, eight figures plus in yeah. two years. Yeah. Uh, so first of all, I guess, what made you, what made you decide this was the right business for you in the first place? Uh, you know, I, I mean, I've always been interested in trying to help, um, you, you know, kind of think about men, think about how to take care of themselves. Um, and then I myself wasn't feeling any, um, any younger. And my wife was reminding me, unfortunately, of that. Um, and I, so I was really interested in kind of this idea of healthy routines for men um, and, and creating healthy lifestyles. Um, pretty big trend going on right now around self-care. And um, so and then combine that with my global experience uh, of my previous company that I own, which was a, a, a retail, a global retail design agency. And um, I just realized that um, how difficult it is to engage men in self-care and specifically in skin care. And I felt that it would be a better online uh, comp play than it would be uh, to try to drive people into the retail, try, try to drive men into retail to understand the category. Yeah. So then what did, when you decide, okay, you're going to go online, um, what was your strategy there? I mean, how did you first, because I mean, obviously there's competing products and that out there and just generally there's a ton of noise so yeah how did you how did you what was your strategy of getting noticed um it was pretty bad at first actually we joined we we created uh we actually had a version one of t shanley um we went online it was kind of a side project with the uh while well, i was involved in that um my global design agency for nine years it was a side side gig and i my thesis was that we could put uh a a routine of products in a box. So not just a one individual product, but a, a routine to help a guy take care of his skin and that we could sell it online by providing additional information, um, providing information about how to use the product and when you should use it and why you should use it. Um, that actually was a failure. Um, I only, you know, in, in the first few months of business, we, we had very few to, to next to no sales besides friends and family. And, um, and the problem that I had, um, John, was that we didn't have a voice in the market. So we had mm -hmm. no, we just were out there in a, in a, in a, in a, you know, in the sea of, of millions of people talking about the same thing. Um, what changed everything and what propelled our sales, as you described just a minute ago, is that I connected with, um, a business partner who was a YouTuber. Um, mm. so in 2000, you know, 16, um, YouTube wasn't really, you know, it was very active, but it, people were, um, not really, you know, engaged with YouTube like it is now. And, uh, I contacted via phone, um, uh, my current business partner, Aaron Marino. And, um, I was asked, asking him if he would like to, to just pitch our product on his channel. And lo and behold, he said, I think this is a great business idea. I want to be a partner and I want to help sell it through our, through my channel. So that's how we got started. We ended up very luckily having a voice in the marketplace based on Aaron's uh, audience. Uh, just let, let me take you back for a moment. So when you initially started, you said it was just friends and family and that. 
How did you maintain your motivation to keep going and not like sort of go, okay, well, this wasn't a great idea. Maybe I need to do something else because I think that's, I mean, obviously that's a a critical juncture that a lot of people reach when they start a business or um, have a new business. So how did you, how did you keep going when your initial thing was probably disappointing, probably not exactly what you expected? Yeah. I had an advisor that said like, Hey, just sell one box and convince me that you can sell one box. And, and I think you've got a good idea. And, um, there was a lot of signs in the marketplace that, um, that we, we were onto something, you know, we were, we were getting a lot of interest in our product. Our price point was too high. We were getting some traffic to our website, but we weren't getting a lot of people actually buying. So there was a lot of signs that were showing that we were onto something, but the, the original business plan was built around the fact that I saw triple digit growth in this area, men's skincare outside mm-hmm. of the US, you know, double digit growth in Europe. And, and, and I really felt like the wave would be coming to America. I didn't realize how significant cultural changes, um, how well that how that has played into, you know, our continual success. But I really knew that there was a huge opportunity here and it was untapped. Um, and I still feel that way. Mm-hmm. So when you so when you uh, you you partnered with the you know your partner the and YouTube, um, was that was that an uh, instant success or did that also take time to build? Because I always feel that we we always kind of expect things to happen a lot quicker than they do, and I think that's always the the challenge is having having the patience. Yeah, I, I agree with your your thought as well. It did it did take a while. Um, but it took a while because we did one other thing in the business. We decided two other huge things that that Aaron brought to the table. One is he wanted to have our own brand. In Teach version one, we were selling other people's products. And um, we, it was highly curated, but you, you could find those products. Like if you searched for them, if you purchased mm-hmm. a box from us and you really wanted that product, you could, you could find them. So that, that wasn't a very good strategy from a business perspective um, because someone could go anywhere else and, and, sure. and buy the products we were selling. But Aaron, um, Aaron wanted to have, you know, our own brand and he wanted to have, uh, he wanted to be a subscription company. That wasn't on the radar in our version one. And it took us like a year to kind of um, structure uh, from when we decided to pivot to this new, to this new business uh, the version two, which is Tej Hanley today, uh, it took us about a year to reform, to formulate, to, 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 we actually luckily got a chemist as a partner, brought him into the business, created our own formulas. Um, and, but over that time, and here's, here's the, the you know, the specific answer to your question, Aaron started very, very early, um, literally within one or two months of our partnership. So only a few months after V1, he started vlogging. So he started creating interest and we started creating a mailing list. So when we launched um, about nine months later in July of 2016, we had thousands, 5,000 guys that were already signed up and we had thousands of guys that actually purchased from us. So it, we took that time to prepare and to try to build a pipeline of, of, of customers and it, it paid it paid off you know, hugely for us. And then how did you build on that? Because sometimes, as we know, you can have initial success and everything, and then it just kind of fades because there's so much noise and people are, let's face it, you know, people switch nowadays. The Once upon a time, people used to be a lot more loyal to brands. Nowadays, they just switch and, you know, something will pop up on Instagram. They say, ooh, that looks cool. I'll try that yeah. one instead. So how did you maintain and sustain and build upon that? Yeah, well, I think Aaron... Aaron's culture still lives today with T. Shanley. It's all about guiding um, guys and, you know, helping them navigate and understand and create healthy skincare routines. And I think like that ethos um, was very, very alive and present in, in the way we present ourselves in our, uh, to our, to uh, potential customers. And I think, so people were very interested in you know, being part of what we were creating and that momentum ended up being contagious and it ended up and, you know, engaging a lot of other men that were also very interested in hearing, you know, the topics that we were covering and talking and the, and the things that we were talking about. So we ended up having, you know, some momentum and we ended up, you know, growing very rapidly through our influencer platform with the help of, of Aaron and his experience and bringing other, other influencers into, into the mix and then continuing to scale um, from there. Mm-hmm. 
What were some of the things maybe that surprised you when the business started to take off that you weren't expecting? Um, that's a tough question. I think like, you, you, you know, probably at some point, I think we were expecting this. Maybe this isn't exactly the answer. We were expecting at some point that um, that we needed to find ways to continue to grow the business if we wanted to be on that same trajectory. We needed to find ways to grow the business outside of the base that we built, um, you know, with Aaron's help. So I think that was somewhat unexpected is, is to how to pivot away from kind of what led us to have great growth in the beginning and try to, you know, figure out ways to have sustainable growth over a long time with bigger and bigger and bigger, um, total addressable market of guys. Mm -hmm. And then also, uh, how do you, how do you, so you have your, you know, your core, but obviously things evolve over time and, and taste and all that. How do you, how did you manage that in terms of expanding your range or anything like that, or bringing in things that you, that maybe your audience were looking for without, you know, cannibalizing your core business? Yeah, I mean, we started just talking to our audience every every year. We would do a survey about what products were they most interested in. We would review, have our our customers review our products and give feedback on what they liked and didn't like. And then we we would categorize, you know, outside of in, in male grooming, but outside of just face care, what other products would you would you be most interested? What would be would you be most likely to purchase if Tish Hanley had available? So we we use that to create a a product development roadmap over, um, you know, over, I mean, we still have it, but over the, uh, the next three years, we started launching product, you know, that were skin related, but were above, you know, below the neck. So body wash and deodorants and bar soaps, um, lip balms and things of that nature. So as, as the business started to scale, um, mm -hmm. that's often a challenge for people because suddenly maybe it scales. I mean, in your case, I don't know, it scaled pretty fast. So, Sometimes logistics and operations and stuff um, lag behind the success. How did you manage to keep everything, like keep all those plates spinning as you started to scale? Yeah, I mean, it, supply chain's a nightmare, as you know, and, and it really was during COVID. And mm -hmm. um, and it's, it, you know, I, I think it's still a challenge. But having the right people, I, I had a big, I had a significant background in manufacturing. Right. Um, and I had a pretty significant background I because prior to uh, my design agency, which I started in 2009, I was in, you know, selling, uh, of, uh, manufacturing of in-store displays and packaging. And so I really knew about, um, the way, you know, the way companies work with supply logistics. And it, it did give me a very good foundation to understand how the, the supply, you know, the supply chains work. Um, but it, we almost, I mean, in, through COVID, it was, it was almost impossible. I mean, our lead times went from, six and six to 12 weeks, um, somewhere between, I shouldn't say six, but eight to 12 weeks, you know, to, to, to 18 weeks, to 25 weeks, to 30 weeks, to 40 weeks. And, um, we almost, you know, it, it was extremely difficult, uh, you know, scaling, trying to grow the business and also do with deal with supply chain during COVID and it had a very long tail. So it didn't hit us really hard. Um, we were only three years in and, you know, 19, we launched in 16, 19, I mean, 20, you know, was when COVID hit. Um, and I think that's, you know, that's when the it, things got really, really, really challenging for us. We're very fortunate that we were able to get through. Yeah. I mean, I remember at that time, um, you know, going down, trying to get a, my son a new wetsuit uh, for surfing. And uh, the guy in the store down the road in San Diego on the coast uh, just said, I'm sorry. He said all the wetsuits are out there. If you look out into outside Long Beach, they're in one of those ships. Uh, been there for a month or two. No idea when they're coming. Yeah, it's incredible. I mean, it was very, very difficult. Um, we were very fortunate. I mean, you know, back to your question. I mean, hiring really good people that have an understanding. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's always the answer to you know, um, right. um, all challenges. Having the right people with the right skill sets. Um, and, you know, getting kind of lucky, unfortunately, we ended up having to spend a lot of money too. Um, you sure. know, on, on, as we scaled and then as we bumped up against COVID, we had to spend, you know, I, it probably cost us a quarter million dollars to, to, to navigate, you know, over those two years to nav a quarter million of, of additional, um, fund, you know, funds to, to navigate, um, through COVID. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, and how do uh, what are the different what different platforms and that do you kind of advertise or or prospect through and how do you make sure you're on the right ones? Because this is a challenge a lot of people have is they try to be on every everywhere at once. And often, you know, you don't have the you know, the money for start. And then secondly, maybe your customers aren't always in all the different places you think you need to be yeah. on. So how did you how did you select the channels and media by which you're going to market? Yeah, I mean, a little a little bit of dumb luck, honestly, <laughs> um, John. I think like YouTube just by default ended mm-hmm. up being the place that we started. Um, and then we slowly started growing into other channels. Um, and, um, you know, as, as you've pointed out, it's almost impossible um, to be both financially and from a skill perspective to be, you know, when you, when you start out to, to be competing across multiple social channels. So mm-hmm. um, it takes a long time. You, and again, you said this earlier, you know, it th- takes a lot longer than you'd expect to, to grow competency in each one of the channels. So over the years, we've, and, and we prefer, to manage all of our marketing internally. So mm-hmm. we we managed by hiring the right people to be channel leads in each channel that we want to compete in. Um, and over time, and, and there's still channels out there that, that, you know, that, that need a lot of care and feeding. We're barely touching. So, so great because it continues to continue to grow and scale our business, but it's slow, steady wins a race. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're, um, so do we see you on TikTok dancing then? No, <laughs> no, I, I've never really been outside of a few podcasts here and there. I've never really, uh, yeah. I've never really performed very well as a, as a, as an acquisition channel. It's just not <laughs> yeah. my forte. Yeah. yeah. And, and so where do you, where, where's the future? Where, where do you, where do you go from here? What are your, what are your plans? Yeah, I, I like, you know, and this might sound surprising to you, but I feel like um, I feel like the best is still is still to come mm-hmm. for for us. Um, I feel that um, there's a lot of significant unlocks that that we're we're um, planning to make that will propel our our growth um, significantly from where we are now, which I'm you know incredibly proud of what we've accomplished. But I really feel like we have significant growth ahead of us, and um, you know I think we've we've laid the foundation for an incredibly effective company, a very cost-effective marketing team that's, that's, that's very efficient in what they do, a very solid supply chain, a great, you know, great product offering. Um, So I, I really feel the best is ahead of us. Um, There's, there's going to be some big unlocks here in the men's space where we're talking to more and more and more men and we're, we're looking to get into those bigger concentric circles and be part of the conversation. Yeah. So what advice would you give to somebody who maybe is back into, you know, in the situation you were like in 2016 or starting out or what, 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 what advice would you give? What, what, what are some of the pitfalls that they could avoid? Um, you know, don't, don't try to extend yourself, you know, stay focused on, on what it is that, you know, that is the core mission of your company. Don't try to extend too far. Um, don't chase shiny objects. You know, there's there's a lot of things out there. So figuring out how to prioritize what it is that's important to you um, and staying focused on those article things. And um, don't necessarily pay too close attention to the competition and what they're doing because just because they're doing it doesn't mean it's right. It could be very wrong or it could be right for them and wrong for you. So I think staying focused and, um, you know, don't chase too many shiny objects, uh, i.e. prioritize what's important. And, um, you you know, those are the key things. Don't bite off too much. Yeah, no, I, I, I I agree. I think those are great, great pieces of advice. Um, especially because we live in a, such a distracted shiny object world today that it's very Mm. easy. I, I think the other thing too, and you probably would agree with this. I think there's no shortcuts and the world is promising you shortcuts all the time. So I think you have to, you have to really evaluate. Yes, there are things that can make things easier for you, but all these ones who are like the shortcut culture that we live in um, is a, is just not real. No, I I I would concur with you, um, and and kind of even one up if I could be sure. so funny to say that I, the shortcut culture I think is 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 not waning uh, or not. It, it's it's really it's really becoming even more and more prevalent, mm-hmm. and I think. Um, it's just sad. And it's, you know, it's part of our culture and it's part of, 
um, you know, the mentality of a lot of young people. And it's just, it just doesn't, you know, there is reality out there and the reality, there are no shortcuts. There are no silver bullets. It's all mm -hmm. about perseverance and, and learning and growing over time. Um, and unfortunately, you know, I think, I think people can be very disillusioned and I'm concerned about the impact of how that is on people, given how much, um, you know, mental health issues there are coming out of COVID. Yeah. And, and I'm really concerned about people, um, feeling like they can, you know, get rich quick when it's just not like that. So, and, and yeah. what the impact is that going to be on people? Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a scary time in many ways, uh, because yeah, they're unfortunately the younger people coming out, you know, they're seeing these YouTubers and all that, you know, like all these rich overnight people and making, you know, but they don't realize that there's like a thousand bazillion other people who failed miserably at it uh, and uh, probably had a terrible time. So yeah, I agree with you. I, I think I think there's a lot of reality checking that's going to come and it's going to be quite brutal in some ways. Yeah. And there's, you know, everything goes in, a, in cycles. There's mm -hmm. um, There's been a lot of men's skincare companies that started, um, you know, around the same time as we did. Um, and there's been a lot that have already, you know, have already that, that appeared to me to be very successful that are, you know, pretty much out of business. And there's, right. there's, there's new companies starting every day. So I don't want to, you know, say that it's hopeless. There's, there's great opportunity sure. for people that are be, that are willing to put in the hard yards and, and be gritty and, and persevere and persist at, at what they, what their dreams are. So, um, it just, be that people need to be realistic about how hard things are, how hard it is. Yeah. And I, and I think that's the biggest thing is hard work. I mean, people need to understand that work ethic and hard work is really what pays off at the end of the day. Well, listen, uh, Kelly, this has been fantastic. Uh, all of Kelly's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell everybody a little bit more about you and T. Shanby. Yeah, I mean, we are just on a mission to help as many men create healthy, you know, routines in their lives and really think about eating right and 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 what what to wear and what to say and what not to say through you know Aaron and his awesome channel Alpha M but we're really trying to help guys create healthy skincare routines um, we'd love to have you you know be part of our journey um, I'm a you know you can come and uh, connect with me on LinkedIn at Kelly uh, Thornton that's E Y K E L L E Y T H O R N T O N uh, at LinkedIn and um, come visit us at teach.com. We'd love to see what you think of our products, T I E G E.com. Fantastic. Well, listen, thanks again, Kelly. And thank you all for watching and listening. See you all again soon. Thank you.